Hey fish friends, how's it going? Zenzo with Tazawa Tanks. Hope everyone's doing well. Hope you're having a great day. I'm down in the fish room and I did some water changes today down here and I wanted to share a couple things with you. So I thought I would uh, just grab the camera and uh, show you a couple things that I've got going on down here. One of the things I thought I would do is uh, give everyone an update regarding Oscar. So Oscar is very popular on this channel, uh, especially due to uh, the saga that happened when I got him and what he went through. And I think overall people just like, like Oscars because they are uh, really personable and uh, kind of a very fun fish to keep. So anyway, there he is in the 90. Um, this is a five foot gallon, this is a five foot, a five foot tank, a 90 gallon, five foot, five foot acrylic tank. And uh, Oscar's in there with some other fish. I have some catfish in there. I have some Congo Tetras. And I have a couple oddballs in there, some misfits. So um, I actually have a couple African cichlids that I threw in there. And it's kind of interesting the reason why I did it. So uh, as a lot of you know, I breed African cichlids. And uh, every once in a while, you'll get a fish that um, is a little deformed. And typically what you would do is you would cull that fish, meaning you would kill it and there's different ways of doing that which I'm not going to talk about in this video but um, in this situation I had them in a big batch and I didn't really catch it until they were larger and I didn't want to cull them as larger fish they had lived for a while they were eating and you know doing quite well they were just a little bit deformed as far as their appearance is concerned so I knew that I couldn't sell them so instead of destroying the fish I thought I'm just gonna throw them in Oscar's tank and uh, They'll just be a couple oddballs swimming around, living in there. So uh, anyway, that's uh, that's what I did. So Oscar's got a couple new tank mates in there. So as you can see, there's uh, a dragon blood African cichlid that just went behind the wood there on the right hand side. There's another peacock in there. You can see the Congos right there. Um, the catfish usually hide under the rocks and the wood, but um, anyway, uh, everyone's uh, happy and getting along and uh, this tank is healthy. Oscar's been doing really well and uh, he is kind of spoiled and kind of, uh, he's a very picky eater, which is kind of interesting. But anyway, that's the update on Oscar. So while I'm talking about African cichlids, I thought I would, uh, you know, kind of show you guys um, these grow out tubs and uh, some of the uh, activity going on. So these are 55 gallon uh, bins that I got from Home Depot. So if you saw the video where um, I got both of these for $20 and was able to uh, set up the system for you know a real, really low price. Um, this is 110 gallons. And uh, I've got a whole bunch of African cichlid fry in here. And I also have some in some 40s and some 20s around, but um, I found that a lot of the good ones are growing in these tubs. So what I did is I pulled out the ones that I like because I want to add some more to the display tank upstairs. Um, I feel like it needs a few more colorful males. So I picked what I thought were the best ones. And um, actually, let me uh, flip the camera around and I'll show you guys what I pulled out and then you let me know what you think. So here are some of the colorful males that I pulled out, and uh, these are all right around three inches or so. That largest one there, that blue one with that big yellow blaze on his forehead, that's the one that was in Oscar's tank. So that's the one that was living with Oscar for a long time, and uh, he turned out to be really beautiful. So that's kind of a cool story. But anyway, I've got uh, you know various peacock cichlids in here. Um, other than OB and the uh, the dragon bloods, I can't really tell you what these others are because I can't be certain what they came from. Um, you know, when I got some of the males previously, I was told that they were one thing and then they ended up being something different. So um, I have no way of, you know, proving that they were, uh, you know, pure or anything like that. This is a dragon blood that I uh, just wanted to move the sponge filter and get it out of the way because it's really beautiful. It's a little bit different than the other dragon blood, which is a little bit more orange. This one kind of has that more pinkish strawberry look with some kind of iridescence going on. So really pretty. So anyway, as you can see, I, I got several, you know, nice looking males. Uh, they're not quite large enough to go upstairs yet. So they are just going to hang out in that tank for a little bit, a few weeks. Um, 
if I can sell a bunch of these fish, I might move them into a 40 for a while and grow them out a little bit larger, but, uh, or I can throw them back in one of these tubs if I separate them. But anyway, um, really happy with how they look and uh, I'm excited to see what they look like upstairs in the display tank. Now let's go over here to these tubs and uh, it's really hard to see, but I'll throw some food in there and maybe we'll be able to see some activity. I'm gonna throw some of this flake food in there and uh, they go crazy for this stuff. So here you can see them just kind of swarming up and uh, attacking the food. Um, anytime I walk up to these tubs, they just swim right to the surface. As you can see here, before I even put any food, they're already at the surface and they just go after it and it kind of makes the water boil, so to speak. So um, anyway, this is kind of neat to uh, see and uh, really it's the only way to see the fish unless I turn off the air or pull the sponge filters out because um, these are so deep and it's dark, it's hard to see down there. Um, I'm gonna go over here to the 40 breeder and uh, just throw a little flake food in there so you can see some of these. Um, and uh, these are all right around three inches or so, two and a half to three inches plus. So uh, these are ready to go. And I've got some other uh, juveniles that are not quite that large, maybe more in the two inch range or so. Um, I've got these dragon bloods and then I've got these uh, OBs over here. So I'll throw some flake food in there and uh, let's see if we can uh, coax them out and have them be less shy so we can check them out. There they go. There's the uh, dragon bloods. They're a little bit shy, but uh, as soon as the food's in there, they uh, start to go a little bit crazy for it. Some of you may have noticed uh, as you're looking at these tanks that there's writing on the glass. And uh, so if you can kind of see right here, it says uh, 831. Um, this tank over here, this uh, tank with my males that I pulled out says 830. Other tanks have different dates. And uh, what that is, is that's a date in which I did a water change. So today happens to be Friday, uh, August 31st. And uh, so I did a bunch of water changes today. Um, this evening and um, then yesterday last night I did the other large tanks so those are the ones that say 830 and then the ones today say 831 obviously and then I have some others like this this uh, tank over here with plants in it, it says 814 um, so anyway so what I do is I basically uh, just write down the date of when I did the water change and that helps me keep track of you know when the last day I did the water change, so I know how often I need, or you know, I know when I need to do another one. So um, how I write on them is with a wet eraser, so a wet erase pen. So um, a lot of you are familiar with dry erase pens. You can write on like a dry erase board and they come in, you know, different colors, green, blue, black, red, etc. But I was actually able to find the wet erase pen. So the reason why I choose, I chose wet erase is it, is harder to wipe off, meaning if I just brush the tank and if it's dry, it won't come off. And the only way for it to come off is to just damp a towel and wipe it off and it comes off really easily. So kind of a pro tip, um, these are really inexpensive. You can grab some at your uh, local office supply store and uh, it might be a good way to just keep track of when you did your last water change. Now, obviously if you have a display tank, you don't want that um, you know, in front of the tank where people can see it but you can very easily just write on the side or a back corner of the tank and uh, see, uh, you know, write the date and then you'll know when the water change happened. And then you can write other things too. You can write, you know, medications. If you added meds, you could write, uh, you know, when fry were born, if you are, you know, breeding fish. So anyway, I uh, just thought it was a quick little tip to uh, share with you guys uh, something to make your life a lot easier. So that was it, just a quick little uh, show around of what's going on right now as far as, uh, as, far as uh, me taking fish out of these tubs and setting some aside for uh, ones that I want to keep and grow. And um, it's a really inexpensive way to kind of continue to, uh, you know, have nice fish to put in my display tank. If I were to go to the store and buy those, um, you know, depending on how large they are, they can be as much as $20 a piece or more. Um, if, if you buy them as juveniles, you can get them for a lot less, obviously. Um, but then the problem is, is you don't know if they're juiced. And I know none of those are juiced because I grew them from nothing. And uh, I don't 
have any hormones to give them so they're just eating you know regular foods that I have so um, I know that their coloration is genuine so uh, again that's a really inexpensive way to do it um, if you wanted to set up your own little breeding system it wouldn't be that hard you just need a couple tanks to start off with some females and uh, whatever male you want to use um, pick a species or do multiple species if you choose to and then just have a, sep a separate tank to grow out your fry and uh, have a plan on getting rid of some because you'll probably end up with too many. Before I go, I do want to mention that the t-shirts are here and they are on the website, tazawatanks.com. I'm not wearing one, I just came home from the gym, but I will uh, show you real quick. So here they are, a big box of Tazawa Tanks t-shirts. I have them in all sizes, ranging from small to triple X. So I've got small, medium, large, double X and triple X. So they are on the website www.tazawatanks.com really easy i will put a link down below in the in the description and um, you do want to hurry because this is a limited supply but of course i will be ordering a second batch as these get depleted that's all i have for now thanks for watching we'll catch you on the next one